So in this episode of the Leader Smith Podcast, I'm going to cover Sergeant Major of the Army Daily's Top 10 Leadership Tips for Sergeants Major. Now, I know you're not a Sergeant Major, or you're probably not a Sergeant Major, but leadership is transferable. Stay tuned. This is going to be amazing. In a world of incompetent bosses, micromanagers, and petty tyrants, you are listening to The Leader Smith. Now, here is your host, Darren Gertis. Okay, so as I said, I know that you're probably not a sergeant major in the Army, and I, you might not even be a leader uh, listening to this. You might be just you know, somebody who has a leader, works for a leader, and you'll understand more about what a good leader is. Even if you're not in that category, these tips apply just to treating customers well. It's great stuff. Uh, I found it in the Facebook thread on uh, Facebook backslash groups backslash learn leadership. It's an open forum. You can come and join us. But it's from a Army Times article about 2015, and uh, it's new to me, and it's new to you. So here we go. Uh, he gives top 10 leadership tips. Number one, yelling doesn't make you skinny. PT does. PT is physical uh, training in the Army. So <laughs> yelling doesn't make you skinny. Go out and exercise. He says, if you're not saluting the flag every morning at 630, you can automatically assume that your soldiers are not. That's leading by example. What a great quote. Uh, they just want to see you out there. This is a team sport. That's right. PT might not be the most interesting thing you do that day, he says, but wars are won between 6.30 and 9. That's brilliant. Uh, it, it's almost like um, uh, Norman Schwarzkopf saying that uh, shine shoes save lives because of the discipline involved. Okay, number two, think about what you're going to say before you say it. <laughs> they said, I never regretted the distinct opportunity to keep my mouth shut which sounds like the Proverbs, right? You know, even a fool is thought wise if he keeps his mouth closed. He said this, quote, you're the sergeant major. People are going to listen to you. And that's true any time that you're in a leadership position. It's like you have a megaphone. And so when you speak, it's, it's amplified, even if you don't think it is. Number three, if you find yourself having to remind everyone all the time that you're the sergeant major and you're in charge, you're probably not. It, it reminded me of... Um, Margaret Thatcher talking about, look, if you have to remind people that you're a lady, maybe you're not. <laughs> same, same kind of thought. You shouldn't have to remind people that you are in charge. Something is wrong with the way that you're leading if you have to do that. Number four, you have to work very hard at being more informed and less emotional. Now, that's great advice, okay? More informed and less emotional. He says, nobody likes a dumb loudmouth. He said, take the time to do the research, learn how to be brief, listen to people, give everyone the time of day. Everyone makes mistakes, even sergeants major, and you will make less of them if you have time to be more informed. And so what he's saying here is great advice, whether you are a leader, whether you are working at, in customer service or dealing with clients or whatever it is, take the time to listen, be human, care. Number five. If you can't have fun every day, then you need to go home. Now, that's a funny statement coming from the, uh, the Sergeant Major of the Army, who probably hasn't had fun every day in all situations, but listen to what he has to say. He says, now, he, again, he's Sergeant Major of the Army talking to a group of, of Sergeant Majors. These are high-ranking enlisted, um, enlisted personnel um, and what they're going to be doing within their units. Okay? He says, you are the morale officer. You don't have to be everyone's friend, but you have to be positive all the time. Why? Because uh, your emotions are catchy, especially when you're in a position of leadership. We catch the emotions of those that are in charge. Okay, listen. He says, quote, the sergeant major is the one everyone looks to when it's cold, when it's hot, when it's raining, or when things are just going south. Your job is to keep the unit together. That's why you're there. The first place they will look when things go bad is you, and they will watch your reaction. So people will look to you to kind of gauge whether we should be panicking or whether everything's okay or whatever. So if you're in any position of leadership, this is sage advice listen to it. Number six is don't be the feared leader. It doesn't work. Now, again, this is coming from the, the sergeant major of the army. He's telling his sergeant's major, don't, you know, rule by fear. That's very interesting. Don't be the feared leader. It doesn't work. 
He says this, if soldiers run the other way when you show up, that's absolutely not cool. Most leaders who yell all the time, they're in fact hiding behind their inability to in effectively lead. That's fascinating. They, when they act that way, it's because they have an inability to effectively lead and they're hiding behind that. Okay, so if you understand what he's saying, fear doesn't work. Get to know your people. Form a relationship. Again, this works whether you're a leader or whether you're dealing with customers or what have you. This is just great advice all the way around. Number seven, don't do anything, and I mean anything, negative over email. We talk about the same thing in class, and I'll go into it in a moment. He says this, quote, you have to call them. Go see them in person. Email is just a tool. It's not a substitute for leadership. It's also permanent. Okay, so here's my rule for email. Um, now, you may not be able to do this because maybe you are connected to people that are far away, but in, in my environment on a closed campus somewhere within within the workspace um, I'll get an email from somebody in a different building and they'll say but whatever it says and if I can answer it in a quick reply that's fine I'll send the email but if I think that it's going to go more than about three rounds of questions I will get up and I'll go see the person now again within the workspace that works not necessarily for customers far away but uh, in this case, pick up the phone or get on a Zoom conference or do something where you're interacting with them. Okay, so let's get back to this. You've all heard it. Once you hit send, it's official and you can never bring it back. Automatically assume that whatever you write on email will be on the cover of the Army Times and all over Facebook by the end of the week. Trust me, I know this personally. Now, the Army Times is his equivalent of what we talk about in class with the Washington Post test or the New York Times test. Don't do anything that you wouldn't be comfortable being on the front page for your mom to read. Okay, don't do it. If I mean, if, you, if you're wondering whether something's ethical, if you're comfortable with your mom reading it on the cover of the major newspaper, then it's probably okay. All right, number eight. It's okay to be nervous. All of us are. And he goes on to say that this happens to be my favorite. It came from my mother. My mom always used to tell me that if you're not nervous on the first day of school, then you're either not telling the truth or either you don't care or you're just plain stupid. Being nervous, again, listen to this. Being nervous makes you try harder. That's what makes you care more. Once that feeling is gone, once you feel like you have everything figured out, it's time to go home because the care stops. Notice how he's connecting this, this odd feeling that you have with caring, and I think that's very important for anybody who's in charge of anything. So if you connect it that way rather than, oh, no, I'm afraid, you'll you'll act differently than if you just think, oh, I must be afraid. That I'm, maybe I'm the wrong person for the job. No, it, it, it shows you that you care. Once this feeling is gone, once you feel like you have everything figured out, it's time to go home because the care stops. What a great line. Don't do this alone. You need a battle buddy. You need someone you can call, a mentor you can confide this. And he says a little bit more and then says again, don't do this alone. Number nine, if your own justification for being an expert in everything you do is your 28 years of military experience, then it's time to fill out your 4187 form. And that's the military uh, form for disengaging from the army. Uh, so he's saying, look, I mean, you have to have a better experience, excuse other than, well, I've been here 28 years. And, and in my context, I've never heard anything good come from a vice president saying, well, because I'm the vice president, that's why. Okay, number 10, never forget that you're just a soldier. That's all you are. No better than any other, but just one of them. Wow, that's from the guy who's the highest ranking enlisted uh, soldier in the army. The, the highest in the army. He says this too, and, and this is a great quote, and it's a great place to end. Uh, quote, you may get paid a little more, but when the time comes, your job is to treat them all fair, take care of them as if they were your own children, and expect no more from them than that from what you expect from yourself, unquote. What a great way of thinking about leadership. Hey, I... I'm just pleased as punch that I uh, stumbled over this article. Um, it, it's it's just incredible. Whether you're in a position of leadership or you're evaluating your boss, these are great tools to use to understand leaders. And again, it even works if you're just trying to please your customer. Thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Let me end with a quotation for contemplation for today, and that comes from General Dwight Eisenhower. He said this, pull the string and it will follow wherever you wish. Push it and it will go nowhere at all.
General Eisenhower. That was a quote from when he was a general, not when he was a president. He used to show his military personnel this as his model of leadership, and I think it's a good one. Hey, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening to this podcast today, and I hope that helps you become the kind of leader that you would want to follow. Thank you.